I'll be your pastor today. I'm Phil McMillan. Uh, first thing we need to do is prepare for this morning's worship with prayer. Nothing we can say or do is worthwhile to God unless it's done in his power. So search your souls, lay aside your guilt, self-obsession, and problems, and ask him for the eyes and ears to, of God the Holy Spirit so that all we say and do will edify this local body and glorify our Savior. And I was told to re remind you that I say local body, but that means you mine too okay it's not just the guys that the many people that are here today okay <laughs> great let's bow our heads heavenly father thank you for one more chance to come together and look to your word heavenly father i uh, uh just pray that god the holy spirit will work in me this morning and that uh uh, all that I say may be to the glory of my Lord, our Lord and Savior, Heavenly Father. We pray your Spirit gives us eyes and ears and that we would uh, know what you would have in store for us in your plan, in your word, in our lives. And we ask all these things in Christ's name, sir. Amen. Amen. Well, let's start this morning with a psalm. Yes, would you all, uh, would you all turn with us and join us in seeing number 214. Psalm 214 is all the way my Savior leads me. And it is down tempo enough that we can all keep up. If you're not too familiar with it, uh, just give it a minute and you will be. Play so many microphones in this room it's like a minefield for me to get away so i can sing without worrying about singing directly into a microphone somewhere it's good to get you <laughs> well um, uh, let's see prayer requests and announcements this morning 
of course, continuous prayers for Herman and Judith. Uh, uh, got um, Pat and I had the blessing of going over and, and visiting with them the other day. And uh, I, I hope that uh, you are all in prayer for Herman and Judith. But let me tell you something. They are in prayer for you. <laughs> and, and when we were talking to them, they asked about so many of you by name. How, how's the day doing? What's it been back in the day? How's Nick doing? Yeah, it was, it, every one of you, he, he, he was asking how you were doing and, and what was going on, seeing if you had any kind of uh, prayer need. And uh, so uh, you can bet you're, you're, uh, you're getting prayed for back if you're praying for Herman and Judith. So, and uh, he has uh, uh, an MRI and was it was an MRI and a... a, a the other scan, PC scan. He's getting two of them done, and they're both going to happen this week on, I think, Tuesday. And uh, the, the holdup, I think, originally on his MRI was you, some pacemakers are compatible with an, an MRI and some are not. And it took them a while to determine that his is compatible with an MRI. So they're going to get both of those tests done this week. Um, I, you know, to be in prayer about uh, their procedure and uh, their decisions on whether you've contrast dye or not, and uh, 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 because he's he's got it, they're looking for a problem with his kidney, and that contrast dye is really tough on your kidneys, and so. Uh, uh, please be in prayer specifically for that need this week, and that, and that it's all just a hoax. We don't have to worry about any other problems. Okay, uh, it could, there's something. They're pretty sure there is something there, uh, and uh, uh, there may be, have to be a biopsy later on. But it's all going to be uh, uh, be around what they find in the MRI. So pray for good results, but pray for. Uh, honest results that we can get this one behind us. He's continuing his therapy. He's uh, uh, sounded great. Uh, uh, good spirits. Your prayers are, are, are he, he covered your prayers and prays for you, as I said. And uh, uh, keep that up. We're still hopeful that uh, he'll be with us again some someday. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, for the youth ministry, please keep the Weisendake households in your prayer. Pray for protection. Uh, pray for the health of those families. I, I know Larry's a little under the weather here recently, so uh, if you can uh, uh, be in prayer for her. Also, uh, uh, the young people are all going back to school this this within the next week or two, okay? And it's a, a, a very hectic situation. Some schools can't decide if they're opening on campus or just online or both on campus and online. Having the kids uh, 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 without anything solid is, is really tough for them. It's tough for the teachers to get them on task and to help them learn something. Uh, and, and for the ones that are, are gonna be in school, uh, uh, with other kids, pray for their their safety from uh, um, uh, for their health. Right, uh, you know there there really is such a thing as coronavirus. I don't think it's as deadly as they said it was, and uh, uh, we may have it contained more now these days. But still, the more contact you have, the the more danger there is for you. So uh, please be in prayer for protection for those young people and all of our uh, uh, college students going back to school also. Uh, we've got uh, 40 something kids and they go to schools all over the country, it seems like. Uh, I know they're in Oklahoma, Arkansas, all parts of Texas, and uh, uh, maybe a few other states as well. Washington. Washington, oh yeah, Washington, I know. Uh, yeah. Well, really at so, 60, because uh, we just added another 20 that graduated. We're up to 60 now. 60 college age kids. Oh, okay, wow. good, good. So it's that 60 students. They've got to be going to at least 25 different colleges, that number of students. That means we have given the gospel to 25 people that are going to go around the world, around the country today, you know, this week. And you, they need your, your spiritual support, that they can stay grounded in the faith that they have been established in, and that they may have the strength and boldness to give it to other people, okay? And uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's no easier for young people to, to uh, spread the gospel than it is for us. You know, they have peer pressure and uh, they have uh, 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 systems testing, right? You, sometimes we're limited and in, in one of the reasons I don't teach in a public school is that I never liked the restraint that I, I couldn't talk about 
Christ in, in a lot of the schools that I, uh, that I taught in and uh, uh, could get in trouble for it, you know, so, or even fired over it in a public school. And uh, so, um, you know, they have, they have restraints as well from their institutions. You tell a, tell a wrong professor about Jesus and you aren't gonna pass a class these days, okay? So uh, be in prayer for their wisdom and boldness in presenting the gospel and their safety as they go around uh, to various parts of the country. Uh, we still have uh, uh, Johnny Thompson and family. Uh, his cancer situation is on our prayer list. Uh, uh, speaking of college students, Autumn Switzer is uh, going to Texas A&M in a couple of weeks. The young lady has been a tremendous uh, uh, faith in action study, guys. She's uh, uh, she doesn't, you know, she, at one point she didn't know if she was going to live through next year, but she was going to go, going to go to school if she did, you know, she was going to walk it in, uh, according to what she thinks is God's plan for her. And, uh, she's doing it despite great burdens and, and, uh, sacrifice. And she's going to be continuing. I understand oral chemotherapy. She goes off to Texas A&M in the next week or so. So be in pray, prayer for her. A couple of weeks ago, I told you Fran Anderson had, uh, um, uh, uh, had had some a mild stroke or two, and uh, and she has been recovering from that. And um, um, uh, some of you have met Fran. She usually is at the early class, and uh, but uh, she's uh, had health problems in the past. And uh, please lift her up in your in your prayers if you remember this week. Most of all, let's pray for our country. There is no political solution. The only solution lays in the work of uh, God, the Holy Spirit, to bring spiritual love and unity where there just flat is no spiritual love and unity, boys and girls. And we've got to uh, spread the gospel so that we have uh, that God, the Holy Spirit, has some ground to stand on so that he can do his work. We pray for revival in our country and be a part of that revival. Uh, I also want to remind you there are uh, three ways to give. You can uh, get on our website at springvalleybiblechurch.org and uh, click on the contribution button. I'm sure Leslie is posting that underneath the, the uh, Facebook feed right now. And uh, you can mail it in. The address is on the website or uh, one of them is putting it in right now as I speak probably. And uh, uh, if you uh, stop by here anytime, you can always drop a, a check in the a plate in the back. We aren't passing it around. We're keeping our cooties to ourselves like good boys and girls. And uh, But the plate is on the back table if, you, if you're so inclined. Uh, I, I've talked to uh, um, uh, Jim and, and Herman, and, and uh, uh, our finances have, have, have been pretty much there through all of this lockdown. Uh, uh, we need about $7,000 a month to keep the doors open. And we've got a little bit in savings in case there's some shortfall one month or the other. But uh, we also uh, have other opportunities and things and we could be doing and missionaries we could be giving more to. And uh, so uh, uh, we have, we have uh, uh, opportunities we, if we have more money. So don't let the $7,000 line hold you back. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can always find a good way to, to, to support the cause of Christ. Uh, we could always use some more equipment. Huh? <laughs> I, I have an update about the internet. Okay, go ahead. Um, so uh, we, we were trying to get the switcher to allow the, 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 P, the, the PowerPoint PDF showing that shows directly onto the Facebook. So we were trying to get a tour for about almost uh, one and a half months, six weeks, and it didn't work. So I didn't reimburse that to the church. I sent it back to China. And then I found a cheaper alternative, but it will require us to actually reconfigure the computer. And God has brought it to light that I totally forgot to think that our computer was last updated in 2013. <laughs> yes. So we built it to last, obviously. You know, we, we had one of our church member, Tyson, built it manually for us. And you know, the memory and the, 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 the space-wise, you know, it's still state-of-the-art until now. It's just the window system itself that needs to be upgraded. So I'm going to work on that, and I'm going to add uh, some of the HDMI video card so that it can support the switcher and download the encoder and work on all that. 
Be that as it may, I don't want to bore you with the technicality, but please pray for the clarity for me and Kit and uh, and, and uh, Jeff Harrison. You know, all three of us we're trying to figure out what we can do. You know, for the best uh, the return on investment that we actually have, so that we can continue and expand the, our the internet. During the time of the lockdown, uh, our the countries, you know, that used to we we uh, the 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 highest time that we had was 125 countries that we reached. It went down to 74, and it's coming back up uh, slowly. So we're hovering around like 92 countries at, at this moment. And uh, please pray for those people too, because the pattern that I see is that they can only come like once or twice a month. You know, and then they have like the mass download for whatever they have. So we, we, whatever solution we're going to, we're trying to keep our file size the smallest so that they can download it. And we also are praying for, uh, please pray for Kit as well, that, you know, his PDF is very valuable. We have got the email from China uh, and Hong Kong, not Hong Kong, sorry, and um, Taiwan in the past that they do download that because it's faster and sometimes they're not allowed to be on the internet for too long before they get, um, the, the, let's say, uh, what's it called, scrutinized or detected. You know, so that is something small for us in the United States, but it's big for them. So please keep those people in mind. They're really persevering for it. Uh, you know, the love of the learning of the word of Christ. So that's all I have. All right. So. There's, there's those needs. If you saw all the machine, if you've been here before and you've seen all this machinery over here, what we need is a, is one machine with one button so I can turn it on and do class without having to have Julie here all the time, right? Yeah, that's that's the working on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, uh, great. Uh, any other announcements or anything? Yes, can please. I add to the prayer list? Real yes, later? absolutely. Uh, can we put Michael McGee back on our prayer list? He's having, um, he's a dear friend of us, him and his wife, Elizabeth, they need our prayers. He's having some heart issues again, okay. and they just can't get it figured out. So. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Michael McGee having some heart issues. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, let's uh, 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 keep these prayer uh, uh, requests before the Lord and uh, uh, pray for the, the upcoming study here. Heavenly Father, indeed we lift up um, all these prayer requests we've talked about this, this morning. We uh, pray for Herman and Judith uh, uh, without ceasing, Lord. We, we want uh, them to be blessed and, and happy, and, and the only way Herman's going to be happy is if he's back in this pulpit. We'd love to see him here, sir. And uh, we pray for our youth ministry and for protection for the wise and Dake households. Pray for... Uh, um, um, Johnny Thompson and Autumn Switzer as they fight cancer, Lord, and we pray for uh, Fran Anderson's recovery. Uh, we pray for all these young people in school, Heavenly Father. Uh, we pray that uh, they would be kept safe and healthy and able to learn and, and grow in their knowledge and advance their lives, that they can be happy and successful in the future, Lord, and, and we just pray you would watch over them and and guard their souls uh, for the, especially those college students guard their souls and help them to um, um, spread the spread your word as they travel around the country we pray for our country heavenly father and we pray for the work of your spirit in revival and we pray that you would continue to use our country as a, a beacon of light in this world of darkness and we pray that we might remain one nation under thee we ask all these things, Heavenly Father, that uh, we might be used to uh, glorify our Lord and Savior in, here in the devil's world. For it's in his name that we pray, sir. Amen. Okay. Well, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom proclaiming to you the mystery of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, 
so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Last week in our study, uh, in 1 Timothy, the early class last Sunday, we had a verse where Paul listed some sins. Uh, he does that from time to time in, in all of his epistles. And uh, uh, often uh, we, we read through those quickly, right? Um, uh, we dismiss the ones we don't do personally and we justify ourselves for the ones that hit home. And uh, 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 often... Really, in, in, uh, you know, I do a Passover, you know, get to that and go blah, 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 and go on to the next thing. And uh, uh, often that, that's okay because uh, we're emphasizing the, the grace that we have, that we have been set free from those sins. And that's why we don't uh, uh, emphasize them a lot when we could uh, uh, talk more about sin in, our, in people's lives. Um, uh, it's part of our human nature that we don't like to be reminded of our sins, okay? Uh, we have to be aware of what sin is and know what we are all capable. And we're capable of all of that sin that, that, that's mentioned in the Word of God. Without knowing of our sins and sinfulness, we can never come to the knowledge that we need the work of Christ. That's true for the unbeliever. They have to realize their sinfulness, be convicted of God that, that they are faithless and not uh, ha and do not have a relationship with God because of it, that makes them turn to the work of Christ. And we as believers, we have to know sin. We have to recognize sin and recognize our own sinfulness so that we can, we can turn to God, so that we can ask the Spirit to help us overcome that sin in our life. Remember, we uh, 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 have a result when we, put our, when we use our faith. God the Holy Spirit tells us something is a sin. He tells us that to, for our benefit, right? He tells us to keep us out of trouble. Just like when your mom told you, don't touch the stove. But you know you touch that stove, don't you? Uh, but uh, uh, that's why God gives us these warnings about sin. To, usually it's to keep us out of trouble, to avoid problems in our life. If we avoid those sins, we will. But we... Uh, 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 Put, we get convicted that we have sin in our lives and to overcome that sin it isn't a matter of our work any more than it was a matter of our work to, to become saved in the first place we, we put our faith that the spirit will uh, uh, work in us and help us to overcome that sin that's one less thing that can damage you in your life when you overcome a sin you're blessed by it when you overcome sin in your life and that glorifies God that's the cycle that we're looking for in our lives, right? God gives us information. We believe that information. It benefits us and it glorifies the Lord, okay? And, and it's done by the work of the Spirit in us, not by our own efforts, our own works, just as, it, as we, we walk as we entered, right? So uh, we don't like to be reminded of our sins. We have to know our sins and that we can do it. Uh, so we can never come to the knowledge that we need the work of Christ or the power of the Spirit in our lives. So this morning, we're going to talk about sin. Okay. All right. The, uh, the fact of the matter is, we enjoy sinning. Okay, That's part of our fleshly nature. <laughs> and uh, we want to say that it can't be wrong if it makes us happy. You know, if it feels good, do it kind of uh, a philosophy. And... Uh, 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 we want to say that, you know, no one wants to say they're intentionally sinning, sinning because we know deep down, we know that that would be bad, right? If we, if we were sinners, if we were doing sinful things, that makes us bad. And everybody has a, an old sin nature, inherent need to be good. Okay. It's the knowledge of good and evil in us. And, and we want to be good and uh, we can't be as good as God. So we want to find a way to call what we do good, right? And if we keep calling evil good in our lives, it's going to cause hardness in our heart. And it's going to lock us into that, that worldly thinking, that, that sinful pattern is going to rule our lives, not the power of the Spirit or the glorification of Christ. That's where our life is supposed to be glorifying. But when we get locked into a sin pattern, it's, it's a glorification of that sin pattern, not glorification of God. Um, um, so uh, 
a, the idea of a, a safe space has become a term in recent times, right? Uh, it has even earned a spot in the American Heritage Dictionary. It's defined as a place, as at a university or a college, that is des designated as a supportive and accepting environment where people, especially members of an oppressed or marginalized group, can express themselves freely and without fear of harassment, okay? This is, uh, 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 marginalized groups are, are people in various sin patterns, right? Homosexuality and, uh, 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 or uh, can be as simple as uh, disabled people or people of uh, ethnic minority. You know, they, can, they can go there and tell people that somebody's picking on them and, and, and everybody tells them they're wonderful. This basically is a bunch of sinners sitting around trying to com comfort one another, okay? Uh, why do they need comfort? Well, they know they're messed up deep down, but they think the problem is you. They think that they feel bad about their sin because you keep calling it sin. <laughs> you keep pointing out to the, the Bible and you Christians keep pointing out that uh, their lifestyle is is not correct before God, and it, and they get they they get hurt, their feelings get hurt over it because they want to be correct before they want to be able to say that they are correct before God, right? And uh, 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 so they. Others are telling them they're bad and they don't want to admit that. All sin comes down to a lack of faith. God has told us to act in a certain way for our benefit and to have a relationship with him. We don't, uh, when we don't believe him and do what uh, we want to do, the result is sin. And we break our relationship with God when that sin happens. All that God is telling us to do boils down to four things that he established and put into order on the earth in the beginning, in the very beginning, guess what book we're about to turn to? Genesis. Genesis. Good guess. All right. In the beginning. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 2, or excuse me, chapter 1, verse 27, and we're going to skip around a little bit. We're not going to read the whole creation story or anything this morning. And, uh, but uh, in Genesis 1, 27, we see, And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him, them, right? He, he uh, uh, didn't, didn't get a, a halfsy in there anywhere. He didn't do more than two, right? And uh, the Word of God explicitly states that he made a male and a female version of, of man. And uh, we believe that. And when we tell people, no, you, you can't be a, 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 a it. You've got to be a he or a she, right? The war of pronouns going on in the world is so absurd these days. Call me them, okay? Uh, let's see. So uh, um, God tells us, gives us this basic information about human existence, and these people are so locked into their sin pattern, they're willing to deny that God created them, male and female, he created them, even though it's exactly what we see in all of, of uh, 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 creation around us, all the animals. There's only a few invertebrates that are asexual, right? And, and uh, uh, to say that, well, men can, uh, people can be asexual because there's uh, such a thing as asexuality and, and microbial <laughs> beings uh, doesn't, doesn't carry. It's not a good argument. Let's see. So uh, you have a, 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 a basic established thing like there's two, two species or, or, or two uh, sexes within this species. And it gets argued because of the rejection of the word of God. You've got to believe that God said male and female, he created them. I believe that that is true. I see it all around me. I don't need to play your silly game. <laughs> you know, you can't be a, you can't be an it. And, uh, 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 that that triggers them, that upsets them, and they need a safe space to run to and hide. And, and, and people tell them, "Yes, you can be a yes, yeah, you're a nice kid." Okay, and uh, uh, so we uh, uh, have these kind of uh, things established right from the very beginning in uh, Genesis chapter one. And uh, oh, and, and one quick point while I'm here, I always like to make this point. It says it, uh, God created them, male and female. He created them in His image. That means. There is a, 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 a 
a male and female aspect of uh, uh, image of God, right? It means that females are just as important in God's plan as males are. Okay, there, there's no uh, uh, reason, no more reason for uh, a chauvinistic attitude than there is a, 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 a prejudice attitude for towards someone on the uh, because of their skin color. Okay, um, so anyway, uh, skip on down in. Uh, uh, chapter 2, uh, Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 23. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, verse 22, And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. And the man said, Now this, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Isha and Isha, right? And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. And the uh, uh, thing that's established here is that man and woman, not only were the two of them created, but they were created to be together. The, that, that man and woman was designed to be a pair and to complete one another. And uh, uh, that's that's something in God's plan. Even in even in the animal world, we see animals that are, are monogamous and made for life and things like that. Okay, but uh, 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 animals you can't say animals are promiscuous, even though they are. But uh, uh, they run they run around and and uh, uh, complete that same picture of, of pairs and and the plan of God uh, all around us. We see it. And uh, so uh, the idea of, of marriage is from the very beginning that we should find that, that, per, that mate, that God will help us find that, that mate that helps us get, the, get his plan done in our lives and that we are faithful to them and, and cleave to them and uh, uh, live this life God has given us together. That's part of God's plan from the very beginning in Genesis, okay? So, uh, and if you have uh, uh, a, a man and a woman and uh, cleave together and all that good stuff, you're going to get the third thing that God established here, and that's a family, okay? That um, um, a man and a woman has children. Those children grow up under the authority and protection of those parents to be taught how to see what God wants in their life, Okay? I don't have to teach them to be lawyers, doctors, and, and, and such. You just have to teach them to rely on, on God, on Christ for their salvation. Teach them to walk in the Spirit. And God is going to fulfill the desires of their, he's going to give them the desires of their heart. And he's going to give them a path to, to complete that, that in their lives. You don't have to worry about a thing if you can get the gospel to them and get them walking by the Spirit. Everything else is going to take care of itself as part of God's gracious provision because it's for his glory, right? So you've got two things to teach your children mainly as you go back to school here. And uh, uh, the outset of, of, of that authority in your family, though, is that you want them to have the basis of a basic education so that no matter what they feel called to do when they're old enough to decide, they're going to be able to do it, Right. I was terrible at math. I was crummy at math. I hated math. I didn't want to do math. And by the time I realized, holy smokes, I need math to be an engineer, it was too late. <laughs> okay, I, I couldn't. I wasn't. I knew I wouldn't touch that engineer degree with a ten foot pole. You know, so uh, I became a history major initially, and and then switched over to classical languages. Yeah, uh, uh, algebra. I hate algebra. You put me that many letters in a line. I want a finite verb to sort that out. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm a language guy, not a, not a number guy. But so you want to you want to have the use your authority as a parent and and help your children when they're young, even though it might take discipline and and the exercise of that authority to get those basics down, so that no matter what comes up in the future in God's plan, they can they can handle it, right? Well, uh, so you have the the. Um, um, creation of, of mankind and, and the division of the sexes and marriage and it begets a family and uh, uh, there's one thing that that God put up first off the most important thing for us as as uh, believers and the most important thing for, that God has ever given us short of Christ 
And that he taught Adam and Eve, the very beginning, that they had free will. He gave them a volition and he told them how to use it. He says up there in uh, Genesis chapter 2, 17, or 16, oh, excuse me, 15, and the Lord God, sorry, two, that was Genesis 2, 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day you eat from it, you shall surely die. Dying thou shalt die is the grammar play out of that phrase. And it means that your, your old sin nature is going to kick in and it's going to start destroying your body because sin destroys. Okay, And that's why our, our body decays. And, you know, and it was uh, the original human design. They lived 600, 700 years, right? And, and uh, uh, that's because the... Old sin nature, it, it, it had just come onto the scene and it, it, it began immediately to not only destroy their body, but it destroyed the body's ability to last from generation to generation. So those lives kept getting shorter and shorter until we got down to about uh, uh, 80 to 100. You don't see a lot out, uh, that survive outside of that range, right? Well, that's how, that's how long it'll take the old sin nature to destroy you if you have no health issues or attack from Satan or hit by a bus or something. Just the old sin nature is going to kill you before, before you reach 110 years old for the most part. Okay, um, so you're going to start dying, and you're going to die, and you're going to die. You're going to hit the end of the road at one point because you are spiritually dead. This earthly flesh cannot last; only the spiritual can last forever. And when they fell, they ate from the tree. That's what they got: dying, and they're going to die. They're spiritually separated from God. Their old sin nature is going to destroy the beautiful body that he gave them. And one day they will be dead because of it. So that's the result of volition. If you could not eat that fruit, you can play in the garden forevermore. And all, all God wanted them to do was just have fun in the garden, cultivate it, eat stuff. Uh, he gave Adam the job of naming all the animals. Uh, I had a revelation one time. Pat asked me why I, uh, uh, he gave Adam that job. And I said, probably because he got tired of Adam saying, Lord, what's that? Lord, Lord, hey, what are those things called? <laughs> he said, you name them, kid, all right? <laughs> um, but uh, uh, he, had, he, had, he had some work to do there just, uh, and, and uh, to eat whatever he needed to eat. It was provided. And... Uh, uh, um, he had a wife and, uh, and life was good. All he had to do was not eat from one tree, right? And that was the only volitional decision really pressing on him at the time. He could decide, you know, oh, I'll have an apple today. No, I want an orange, you know. No, I want the forbidden fruit for crying out loud. You know? And uh, uh, so he uh, 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 was given that one choice. And God, of course, in his wisdom, knew that he would one day. But say to what, God, Jesus Christ came to the Garden of Eden every day and chatted with them. And they would tell him how wonderful the garden was and how much they, they loved him and appreciated all that he had done in his creation. And, and, and that's all God wants from us. He wants us every day to be mindful of all that he's given us and, and to appreciate his creation and his great love for us. He wants the relationship with us. That glorifies him, that we thank him for all that he's given us. That's what he wanted from Adam and Eve, and he wants the same thing for us now, but he's given us so much more. He didn't just give us a, tree, a, 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 a great garden to play in. He's given us eternal salvation through his son. Adam and Eve could make a volitional decision and lose their eternal life. We are made a volitional decision and because it's the work of Christ, we'll never lose it, right? So um, uh, volition is a, a very important thing to uh, uh, God in, in, in his plan. And he established it right off the bat in, uh, within the first two chapters of, of, of uh, uh, Genesis. And one thing we find more that, that God has given us 
that's the 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 basis of all of all of the reason things are sin. Okay, and it's uh, found in Genesis chapter eleven. Uh, the the old story of the Tower of Babel, right? Babel, 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 and. Uh, 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 look at the I'm sure you've read it before but let's read through from uh, chapter 1 or chapter 11 verse 1 in Genesis now the whole earth used the same language and the same words and it came about as they journeyed east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there and they said to one another come let's make bricks and burn them thoroughly and they used brick for stone and they used tar for mortar and they said, come, let's build, a, build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven and let us make our, for ourselves a name. At least we, and this is why we want to do it. We're going to establish ourselves, make a tower all the way to the heavens, okay? Throne the seat of God in the heavens, right? And the and, and we, reason we're going to do that is at least that we want it to happen, at least we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth be scattered out, taken from one another. And, and uh, if we establish a name for ourselves under this city, we'll all be unified together. All the people on the earth will be right here, unified together, okay? And the Lord came down to, in, to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, behold, they are one people and they are, all have the same language. And this is what they began to do. And now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them, okay? They don't need God. We are all one. We all have this big, big beautiful city. We have a, a tower reaching all the way to heaven that, that we can uh, uh, rule from. We can do everything we need. We've, got our, we've provided our own food. We have uh, 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 each other down here. And we don't need God at all. They've put their city, their their life, and the the unity of all mankind before God. So God says, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They say, Come, let us go down there and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the whole earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth. Okay? Then, and then start the genealogies. The idea here is a world, a universal world of man, uh, is, is, uh, op is opposed to the plan of God. What God established here when he divided the, the, world, uh, the people of the world by language and sent them to all parts of the earth, he established nationalism, okay? It's a good thing that God has done this. It makes, uh, uh, remember the flood in chapter 6, right? That happened because all mankind was corrupt. Every bit of the, of the people of the earth was corrupt. And God said, there are all so far gone, I'm going to have to wipe them all out. When God made nations, it now divides up the people of the world. One nation may be so far gone, God says, pulling the plug on that one, but we're all still here as long as we're, all the other nations are here, right? And, and so God is never going to be in that position of they're all so messed up, I've got to destroy the earth again. That's why he could promise Noah that that flood isn't going to happen again, right? And uh, that's why part of the beast plan in the, in the tribulation is to make one world government. We'll all be together. We'll over, even overcome the difference of languages and uh, <coughs> we'll rule the whole world as one and we'll play by our own rules. We don't need God's rules anymore. Because man is the, is, is the ruler of this earth. Man is the one that matters, and we'll make our own rules. We don't have to worry about male and female, he, he made them. We don't have to worry about any of the rules God has given us because 
we're going to make our own provision and take care of mankind on our own. I'm not making that up. You can read uh, uh, the laws of humanism. You can look humanism up in the uh, in Wikipedia and see the the creed, the the rules that are, uh, that uh, John Dewey wrote back in the 1920s, and it's all about man being the boss of man. No religion, no uh, 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 everybody playing by the same rules. It's not com. It's it's not economically based, so it's not communist. But it's man being the ruler of man. That's what humanism is all about. You don't even need communism to defy God's plan, right? That's just one way that, that people defy God's plan. Socialism, communism. Humanism is just as bad because it's man being the boss of man to take care of himself and doesn't have to worry about God or play by God's rules, okay? So uh, uh, these things... Uh, that we have volition, that we have marriage and family, and that we're established in nations around the whole world. These are what this is God's plan for mankind. These are good things, all right. Good according to God, not just good according to us. We can could, we've come up with other plans, right? We don't we don't have to be faithful or or uh, 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 get married. We don't have to even bother to get married anymore. We'll just sleep with whatever we want to, whenever we want to, and uh, uh, let somebody else raise the, the children, and we'll uh, 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 everybody will be equal uh, uh, economically and socially, and, and we'll have a, a utopian world here under one government. And it's, it's, a, it, it's just a rejection of God's plan, these four basic things, family, nationalism, and marriage, is, and volition. And, and volition... Believers, we're losing volitional choices each and every day. Do you get to choose whether you wear a mask or not when you go into a store? They're threatening to, to find you. They're taking away your volitional choice to do that, okay? Now, you can tell me it's a dumb choice, but people make dumb choices each and every day, right? You have a, you have a, 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 a speed limit. Are you going to go that speed limit, or are you going to go 10 miles under it and annoy me? or 10 miles over it and annoy somebody else or get a ticket, right? So uh, uh, you have uh, volitional uh, decisions are, are impeded or advanced by the government system that you live under, okay? And that's another reason why, why, why nationalism is important. When a nation's government chooses to take away the volition of its citizens, that's one nation that has lost that right. Right, there are nations right now telling its citizens, you cannot believe in Jesus Christ. You cannot worship God. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna worship the our political party. That's going on right now, right here today. That's a sure sign you got an evil nation on your hand. And but to a lesser degree, even here in America, if you use a social media format to uh, volitionally uh, oppose some one idea or another. The format itself can decide, you don't get to say that. Another, the other side can say whatever they want to, but you don't get to say that. You've lost your volitional right to speak on the subject, okay? And uh, uh, so it's a sure sign that your nation is stepping away from God and God's plan when you see that nation tearing down volition, family, marriage, okay? It's a bad nation, and God's going to pull the plug on it sooner or later. God's wrath is still alive and well for those who reject him. He's merciful. He wants us to come back to him. But he's, he's still in the business of pulling the plug on those who reject him at some point. And you know, we don't know what that point is. But as Herman said one time, uh, uh, if it's almost to the point where if God doesn't destroy America, he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology, you know? <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, so all four of these things are seen in the, the law that God gave uh, the Israelites, um, and especially in the first 10 of those laws, the Ten Commandments. Uh, for the Jew, the Ten Commandments are a special set of spiritual laws that the Lord God himself wrote on two stone tablets. And Moses brought them down from Mount Sinai. In the scriptures, these laws have, uh, are called uh, 
uh, Aseret Hadevarim, or the ten words, or ten utterant phrases, and uh, uh, and in Christian theologi uh, theological writings, they're often called the Decalogue. Deca meaning ten, and and log meaning uh, rules, and uh, uh, ten rules in Latin. Decalogue, the traditional. Uh, um, let's see. Yeah, uh, Decalogue from Decalogos, ten statements. And uh, uh, that's the way it's written in the Septuagint. That's the, the phrase used in the Septuagint, Decalogos. So that's where it gets the theological name, Decalogue. Uh, so we have these first 10 rules, and, uh, and God himself wrote these in stone for Moses. So they're extra special for some reason. And we see them recorded not once but twice in, in the Old Testament. Uh, Exodus 34, 28 is, is the uh, uh, words of God as he wrote them in the stone spoken to Moses. And in Deuteronomy 10.4, uh, the second writing of the law, uh, uh, that's where Moses wrote them down for, for everybody to read. Okay, So you get them recorded in, in Exodus. That's the historical tale of God tell, saying them to Moses. You see them written in Deuteronomy, and that's Moses writing them down for everybody to, to, to know them, okay? To put them in their heart and remember them. And uh, uh, so we see it twice. Sec uh, the, sec the second time the law is, is written there. Uh, to the Jews, the Torah, the first five books of our, our Old, Te Old Testament, has a total of 613 commandments, which includes the 10 from the Decalogue. Traditional rabbinical Jewish belief is that these commandments apply solely to the Jewish people. Uh, many of these laws were instituted because of sin, uh, example of the, of the Passover, uh, and hence were in fact only for the Jews because the gospel did not go out to the Gentiles until after the sacrificial law ended at the cross. Um, it's, you know, we see a picture of, of Christ's work in the Passover, okay? And, uh, uh, the, but the, the Jews in, in the Passover, they saw it as, as, as simply their deliverance from bondage, okay? They missed the Jesus part of it. And uh, uh, so they often take it in tradition just as, as a picture of God's sal salvation from the e Egyptians that, allowed, that brought them out and made them a nation of their own, okay? And, it's, it, and we in the church, we look at the, the Passover and we say, okay, well, that's, that's God showing us what Jesus was going to do. He was going to come and, and, and that, be that lamb that died so that the, the death would pass over us and we would have eternal life because of him. Uh, let's see. So um, the Ten Commandments, of course, are very much a standalone law for all mankind. And that's because these ten laws all relate to the things that we see in the beginning. Okay. Um, let's look over at, uh, let's look at it from Exodus 34. Exodus 34, 28. Now, one thing I, I do want you to understand that uh, of those uh, over six over six hundred thirteen commandments that we see in the Torah, the Ten Commandments are very special because the rest of them go on and talk about uh, how the Jews are supposed to be a nation, how they're supposed to be a family, specific things that they have to do in their life. You hear me saying "do," right? And uh, uh, we don't, we aren't under the under those because we are uh, 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 under grace. We've been saved by grace. We can do whatever is of faith. We can do what God, the Holy Spirit, tells us that we might do. Okay. So uh, you may have uh, uh, one situation where you would be. Uh, really strict on a child and another situation where you would be more lenient or with two children because of their personality. You know, this one's going to need a spanking and that one you just got to look at. He's going to start crying, right? So, uh, uh, God, you know, uh, we could do that. We can have that kind of leniency in, in law uh, because we have God, the Holy Spirit. 
To the Jews, though, they were told each and everything to do. If a child did this, you whipped it. If they kept doing it, you stoned them. You know, it was it was the thing to do was design, was put in the in the law, and you had to do it. Okay, if you were going to please God, so uh, we have that 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 uh, freedom of God, uh, by relying on God, the Holy Spirit. We don't need all those other laws in the Torah, but these first ten, they're all related to God's establishment. They were given by God Himself. And it's important to us still this day. I've often seen believers, people who believe the, the Bible, say, oh, those Ten Commandments don't matter anymore. That's the Old Testament. That's part of the law. No, they do stand alone, and they are universal. You can be a non-believer, as many Jews are, and try your best to live your life according to the Ten Commandments, and you're going to have a good life from it. Because God gave those rules for a purpose. And if, if you were honest, those rules would even teach you your sinfulness and your need for Christ. But just adhering to the things God has established on earth is going to cause even an unbeliever to be blessed on this earth. Okay, So uh, we're in uh, Exodus chapter 34, verse 28. Um, um, So, uh, no, let's skip ahead. There with the Lord for me. Missed my reference there somewhere. Exodus twenty two through seventeen. Exodus twenty. If you're looking for the actual text. Yeah. Here we go. Exodus 20. Sorry. <laughs> and then God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery. One, starting with one in verse three. Uh, you shall have no other gods before me. That's God's number one rule. He's the only God. He's the only thing that should be worshipped. Not man, not uh, uh, an idol or anything else. Um, you shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven or earth or beneath or in water or under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children on the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. Uh, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. When you call on, on God, you better be serious about it, right? <laughs> and uh, um, let's see. But remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Uh, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath for the Lord your God. And in it you shall do, not do any work, for you or your sons or your daughters, your male or your female servants, or your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be prolonged in the land where the Lord God 
gives you. Honor your father and mother. That's a recognition of family, right? Just as, as you were born and came under the, uh, uh, the care of your parents, when you are older, you are obligated to take care of your parents. It's not just a, a, a cultural uh, thing. It's ordained by God that it would be that way, that you would uh, love and, and take care of your parents when, when, you get, when they get older. And uh, that's part of honoring your mother and your father. Respect them and provide for them if necessary even. Um, um, let's see. Uh, you shall not, shall not murder, okay? And that mine has murder in it. It doesn't say you shall not kill. Uh, uh, kill happens uh, in warfare. Kill happens in uh, justice systems. But murder is, is uh, just uh, uh, the act of removing another's volitional responsibility. Once someone is dead, they can no longer choose to do the right thing. Even if they have wronged you greatly and you, and you, mur and you murder them uh, on, on your own, right? You've taken away their, their ability to, to turn back to God, to make that wrong right. You've stopped volitional choice in that individual. And that's the worst thing about killing someone is that you, they no longer have a, an opportunity to, to make a decision for their salvation. They no longer have an opportunity to glorify God in, because they're not on earth anymore. Okay? You shall not commit adultery. That's being unfaithful in a marriage. Marriage again. Uh, you shall not steal. Steal, when we steal, we, we forget that God is in charge of our provision, okay? And just as God in that garden said everything is provided for you, God has provision for you. And when you steal something, you're saying God hasn't provided for me. I'm going to provide it for myself, right? So uh, it's a denial of, of God's blessing in your life when you start stealing things. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And uh, 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 this is, is lying under oath, right? Taking a, 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 making a statement in, in, or accusing someone falsely. Uh, and, and that seems to be the only power in our court system these days. <laughs> they, I, they lie under oath so much, I, I can hardly, hardly believe that uh, our jails aren't full of politicians. Okay, uh, because they take a they take a, a vow to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and then they tell lie after lie. Um, uh, but there's a uh, and and uh, also you would notice that in a, a, a Senate hearing is is not a court of law. Okay, and and if you come to a Senate hearing, you don't you don't have to take an oath. You're not sworn in in most Senate hearings, so they bring them there and let them lie. <laughs> but, and, and, you know, they encourage them, come and lie before everybody, and uh, uh, then it'll never get to the courts because you've, you've uh, already sworn to it uh, in, in, in our, our uh, testimony here. Uh, so, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor you sh you, because it breaks down our justice system, right? And God is fair and just and, and wants us ooh, goodness, to uh, not uh, carry on. Uh, it's useful when people look at their watches. See, I need people in the audience to look at their watch, so I know that I'm almost at the end. <laughs> Let's see. You shall not, uh, uh, it breaks down our law system, and it, it leaves the evil of sin in our society. When someone robs a bank, it doesn't, it doesn't just, it isn't just money changing hands. If that person isn't caught, then it breaks down society. It makes us Un, untrustworthy of our financial institution. It makes us, uh, 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 and it, it, in God's word, it says it leaves a stain on our land when such a sin goes unpunished. And it has a ripple effect in our society. And so uh, uh, when we uh, uh, bear false witness and steal and, and these things, it's bad for the nation, bad for our national uh, uh, survival. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor, neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or a female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Again, this is the denial of the fact that God is your provider 
And uh, you are to be happy with what God provides you with, right? Uh, just as he told Adam and Eve, you got the whole garden, help yourself. And uh, uh, when we as uh, uh, believers here in the world, we, we, we do the work that God sets before us, we get paid, we use our money wisely, and we don't steal, or, or, and we shouldn't lust after things, right? That's what coveting means, to lust after things that other people have, especially. Okay? And uh, we should be appreciative and grateful for what we have and not jealous and envious of, uh, of what others have. Okay? Um, um, um. okay. And so there's a, the Ten Commandments and they all center around those established things from the very beginning and the fact that God wants us to desire a relationship with him. He's the one and only God and he's our creator and provider and he's given us these wonderful things and he wants us to, to have that relationship with him. And when we sin, we break that relationship with him. And we're going to go back to Timothy next week since I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time here. And uh, we'll save the, the passage in Timothy, the list of sins in Timothy, and uh, talk about how those uh, uh, break our, our relationship with and exactly what those sins are about, okay? It's not, preview of coming attractions, it's not about your uh, 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 work and, and what you do or not do. It's how you, uh, you uh, uh, deal with God and your relationship with him. And we're going to see that these uh, established things from the beginning and uh, even the Ten Commandments are part of the, those sins that uh, Paul is telling Timothy to not allow in his church. Okay? All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, bearing with me this morning. And I uh, hope I haven't kept you from your pot roast or anything like that. And uh, um, let's see. Uh, let's uh, bow our heads and we'll have a closing prayer today. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word, for your grace, for your blessings. We pray, Heavenly Father, that uh, these things we've seen today will uh, correct our thinking in, in uh, the way that we look at this world. Lord, we pray for the eyes of your spirit in our worldview. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we will forever, uh, um, um, each and every day, each and every moment of the day, be looking to our relationship with you and the glorious work of your Son in our lives, that we may not sin, that we may uh, uh, rely on your Spirit and glorify our Savior. And we ask all these things to, in his name, sir. Amen.